Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. Today we have a video that may be very interesting for many of you. If you have a network infrastructure based on Wi-Fi, it is critical, you have a lot of concurrent clients to access points, and you want your network clients to have the best experience they can while connected to your network. A year ago we analyzed deeply and from different perspectives Wi-Fi 6 connections not only from Unify access points but also we gave the opportunity to Omata from TP-Link and quite frankly it impressed us for many reasons. Ease of use, consistent interface different to Unify from Ubiquity, performance and of course what is most important to many of us, stability. That is exactly what has taken us to analyze yet another access point from TP-Link and the new standard 802.11be or what is commonly known as Wi-Fi 7. We're talking about the Omata EAP773, a BE11000 access point with very interesting characteristics that you may like. Let me show you. It comes very well packaged, a little oversized the packaging for what it actually includes, as it just includes the access point, the instructions, the mounting brackets with accessories, and that's it. You will not even get the power adapter. That's right, that is actually normal for business access points, which is where mainly this access point is intended to be used. But hey, more and more every day we see people installing this in homes, small offices, businesses and more. And the main reason is they are very stable and configurable. Businesses, for example, may implement hotspots, captive portals and many network solutions based on these APs. And due to how many concurrent users one may support is more than enough. As you can see, for example, this access point can support up to 128 clients per radio. Actually, very interesting. So again, no adapter. A pretty slim access point, but you have the possibility of using a 12 volt adapter. Ironically for this, I opted to use this Netgear 12 volt 3 amp adapter. By far, more than enough, as it consumes more power when connected to an 802.3BT or PoE++. We were able to prove these readings, however, in our testing scenario, we did not take it to its limits. As you may have guessed, these access points are a fantastic option for schools, hotels, campuses, convention centers and more. And Wi-Fi 7 is here to address many of the concerns that these type of scenarios pose, at least the more powerful APs as it features simultaneous transmission using different bands and different radios, hence the need of a 10 gigabit per second connection. Ok, so some questions that you may have right here. Can I connect to a switch with an 802.3AT power over ethernet port? According to TP-Link, yes, and we were able to prove it. You can do this as long as you make sure for your switch manufacturer individually your port will be able to provide at least the maximum power that your scenario will need from the access point, which will be about 23 watts. Of course this with a small decrease in the power of the 6 GHz spectrum. Typically, power over Ethernet plus switches are Gigabit Ethernet, so you will not be squeezing the capabilities and the power of this access point. Let's remember that just on standby, through power over Ethernet, it will consume a non-negligible amount of power. The unit will turn on, but will not be able to provide Wi-Fi when using a simple older power over Ethernet connection. So what we decided to do is connect it to the 12 volt 3 amp adapter and directly connect it to a unified 10 gigabit per second aggregation switch. So it immediately connected and negotiated 10 gigabit per second. Something that is fantastic for these newest APs. It will also do something similar if you have for example a 2.5 gigabit per second or a 5 gigabit per second switch. If you're gonna have a big infrastructure based on these powerful access points, you might want to consider getting a switch such as the Unify Switch XG 6 power over Ethernet ports, which will be able to provide power for these units. I will leave you the links in the description and you will actually get an extraordinary performance from these devices. For smaller deployments, the TP-Link 105, of which I also leave the links in the description, can be a great affordable solution. Omata switches are, to the moment we make this video, not available in such configuration combinations such as Power over Ethernet++ and several 10 gigabit per second ports. Something that a lot of us are still waiting for. Ok, so more than 3 months using it and with several very demanding clients, we can be very confident uh, that this AP may address many of your needs, for which this access point demonstrated at simultaneous connections that will be delivering the performance that you actually need. That is the reason why it needs a 10 gigabit per second uplink. Something very interesting and is something that we had not seen before in Wi-Fi. At least, not at this price range. 
We have not been able to squeeze in Wi-Fi 7, it's 6 GHz band connection, as quite frankly, the adapters we bought for Wi-Fi 7 still have things to improve. We'll be updating this Wi-Fi 7 video series as we get more adapters to test. However, they are still above the 1 gigabit per second mark, which is quite impressive and just as with Wi-Fi 6, to be honest, you might not notice you are accessing the network resources through Wi-Fi. Something very interesting. In terms of power and range, this access point is very good and that won't be a problem. Beware again that limited power in the 6 GHz band may affect you when connected to a Power over Ethernet Plus port. Design is very important, but more its capabilities and power, for which this access point excelled in demanding scenarios. We are very happy having tested this access point. Ok guys, thanks for watching this video. I really hope that it was as informative as it was intended and that actually takes you a step further into comprehending if Wi-Fi 7 is the right networking solution for you. We're gonna be waiting for your comments and of course answering any questions that you may have. Remember that your great support comes from your kind subscription to our channel and liking this video. See you next time.